Hey everyone, Steve here with another Unity Asset Review. Today we are going to be looking at the Ancient Empire, the, sorry, the Polygon, Polygon Ancient Empires pack by Synteth Studios. At the time of recording this, this uh, asset retails for $149.99 USD, so $150. Bucks. Uh, let's go over the ratings overview. Um, as a reminder, I do pass fail. The stuff like all of the um, all of the things that I review, either in my opinion, are good enough or they are not. So it's simple pass fail, not a numbered rating. So as far as quality is concerned, uh, this passes. It's very good. Uh, like with all the Synteth Studios, uh, especially the Polygon, um, the Polygon series of Synteth Studios assets, it is it is good. They cram a lot of fidelity into low poly work, and uh, yeah, it, it passes. Uh, modularity and workability. So this asset is how a is how modularity is supposed to be done. Uh, this is amazingly fantastic when it comes to how they do modularity. Um, this asset does not have an asset manifest scene, but what we'll do is we will go in and I'll sort of explain <clears throat> very briefly in the demo scene we're going to run through with the first person character controller. Um, <clears throat> excuse me exactly how they do some of their modularity and why it is as good as it is. Uh, but yeah, it absolutely passes. Again, this is how modularity should be done in an art asset pack. Um, support and serviceability. Synteth Studios is really great. I've said it before and I'll, I'll say it again. They're really great about uh, uh, supporting customers post-purchase. So uh, it absolutely passes there. And value. Um, for 150 bucks, I, I think that this is well worth it. Uh, you can do a lot with this because of the modularity. Um, and uh, in my opinion, at the $150 price, it is absolutely worth the value given the hyper modularity that they did with this. Um, so that's all for the acceptance criteria. Uh, let's hop right into the actual gameplay. So... We're on the outskirts here of their demo level. Um, there's fencing. There's a good amount of these wheat uh, uh, fields and stacks. One thing I will say about this is this doesn't have a collider on it, um, but that's easy enough to uh, uh, add yourself with a convex collider or something or a mesh collider. Um, so... These guys, uh, these are all modular, modularly designed or created with modular pieces. You'll see a number of these pieces crop up later on, but there's a number of these gazebos that you can use as sort of reference to make your own. Um, there's a whole, there's a whole lot of clutter in here, uh, and you know, you all know by this point how much I like my clutter. So there's a, a decent amount of this vegetation type clutter. Vegetation, vegetation clutter, vegetation clutter in the distance. Even these hay things are definitely of that um, clutter capacity. This stuff is all modularized. We'll hop back here at the end and I'll point it out. But these are all modular pieces as well. Um, the, wall, uh, the, the walls here are all individually modularized. Those fences are the same ones that are back there. So again, modularized, more modularized. Um, uh, stuff here. Um, so this is where we'll start to see some of the uh, hyper modularization uh, stuck. Um, some of the hyper modularization of these set pieces. You'll see a lot of these set pieces be reused later for other buildings, more complex buildings, to just give everything a unique style. Um, so hop over here. Uh, obviously, wall running and slicing both work, and oh, come on. mantling. Mantling works, but it's going to be a pain in the ass, isn't it? Oh, okay. Well, let's see. Mantling does work. I'll try to get it on a, a different, um, a different uh, set piece. But there's all this, all these scroll uh, shelvings. You'll see these reused later on as well, and especially in the main temple area, um, they just stack them to make them look even more uh, look like a whole new set piece. Lots of different furniture, ancient empire's furniture. 
uh, stairwells and stuff like that, all modular. The only thing, so these these gazebos, these like round gazebos are not, and I would have liked to have seen some of these modularized out as well, but that's getting, you know, super, super nitpicky on my part. Um, you go over here, actually. So I'm going to run through a couple of wells and stuff like that. I'm going to run through a couple of these houses. I did open up the doors and some of them to sort of prep for this more vegetation that's modularized. Um, so these interiors and the upstairs with the, uh, these guys, this is the same, um, top used on that gazebo over there outside the wall. It's just repurposed. Um, some of these other pieces like the interiors or the floors rather are the same pieces there. And then you can see that they're reusing the same, the same pieces here to just build bigger and more grandiose, um, uh, you know, buildings. Uh, of course there has to be toilets. Um, so these are all very much just, you know, individual set pieces that are repurposed to be really, really unique um, uh, buildings and stuff. Lots of vases, uh, lots of set, lots of those set pieces or those, those clutter pieces. Um, there's a fair amount of door options. I don't know that let me in. A uh, fair amount of door options. There we go. Um, and, and then up here, again, you've got those same pieces that are just repurposed to make even more unique buildings. Uh, the IV is all modularized, so you can you can remove the IV entirely um, or add it however you want. So that's all modularized. They did a good job of modularizing that. These pillars and these pieces up here are the, the same pieces that are used on the main temple just scaled up. So bear that in mind as we go over there. Uh, you've got a decent amount of, um, you know, marketplace pieces. So lots of baskets, uh, lots of, like I said, vases, vases, uh, stuff like that. Uh, lots of pillows, blankets, you know, all the stuff you'd expect in like, a, you know, Roman or Greek marketplace. Um, a few different fountain options. There's one in there. There's a couple other ones scattered throughout. Sundial um got some fx going on again here's those repurposing of the of those same pieces to make more unique set pieces the more unique buildings rather uh here's that same gazebo these again are unfortunately not modularized a couple of different pool options um so here too we've got we're just repurposing the modular pieces to make open air buildings, uh, more bed solutions. Um, so we've got a bunch of statue options. There's these two over here. Uh, you're going to see those same ones up in the temple, just scaled up and or down. Uh, they have a whole pantheon area here or you know, I think it's called a Pantheon. I can't remember exactly. Uh, sort of ancient auditorium, um, you know, theater. These are all modularized pieces as well. And we'll, when we hop out of uh, play mode, we'll go into the editor mode and I'll kind of show that off a little bit as well. But these are all also modularized. Um, so you can build that as big or as small as you want. Um, so again, you've got just <laughs> reusing a lot of the same pieces to make, I mean, this is a pretty unique looking building, but they're just reusing those same modularized pieces um, from before. So that's all why I, why I say this one, this asset is modularization done right. Um, I wish they did this on all of their assets, uh, but they don't as, you know, if you've watched some of my other ones, you'll know, but, um, but yeah, these are all very, very, well modularized to be able to allow you to make truly unique buildings, even the temple pieces. So the stairwells leading up, all modularized in a very intelligent way. Um, uh, so here's those statues again. That one is the one that's 
right there. Just, uh, I mean, technically this one over here is scaled up by probably four or five X. Um, uh, so again, more torches, different varieties of torches with FX added. Um, here is, I think this is the same statue that's, let's see if we can see it here off to the side. Oh, maybe it's got a sword in that one. So that's going to be that one. <laughs> so that statue is just a scaled up version of that statue. Um, Again, just repurposing all these ivy pieces are all modular so you can pop those out if you want you can use them sans uh more statues here's those um those scroll uh uh shelving units that actually there's a good one right there that's the one that you saw before these are scaled up by like 1.5x the scrolls can come out as well i think they're if memory serves i think they're all clumped together in one but the scrolls can be hidden or removed from from the actual our, our, our separate prefab from the actual um uh cabinet or, or shelving unit there um so you've got that's a different statue uh i forgot to mention you got some of these incentane things just a lot of clutter there's even more vases and again you know you guys know at this point how much i like my clutter so that's a quick run through. I'm going to hop out and just show how they sort of modularized everything before ending this one. But so uh, I mentioned that these are the same pieces. Uh, UI is in the way, but these are the same pieces that are used up there. Just these ones are scaled up. Actually, I'll do this. I'll pop through the inspector mode. Um, these are the same pillars that are used over there. Those pillars are just scaled up up there. Same thing with the IV pieces, uh, which I can show over here. This is an easy one. So uh, there we go. So the IV is all just separate pieces that you can um, uh, pop in and out. Although in these pillars, it isn't. But there are separate pillars that are, or the IV is separate. Um, so talking about the modularity. So see, like this is how really these these assets should be <laughs> it allows you to have infinite level design freedom to make whatever the hell you want to make as a designer um so uh, this this is definitely like like i said this is this is sort of the pinnacle of how it should be done you know so these these pieces uh, these pieces creating the you know um the banister sort of thing for the stairwell you can just reuse all of these in really creative ways this top piece is the these pieces are the exact same pieces that are out there on here they're the exact same pieces you see in a lot of these um and even on the you know roofing so you see how they do like this is this is how that part is supposed to be so these are all let me do this sort of expand them out here so we can see what we're dealing with and then do that so you have true true freedom and and that goes across almost every single asset or uh, sorry prefab rather that's in this asset um you you really do have a lot of creative freedom i mean you could make a low poly assassin's creed game <clears throat> like 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 Odyssey was, you know, uh, just with this pack alone, honestly, um, and obviously, you know, character controller and programming your own stuff. But I mean, as far as the levels are, the level design is concerned, you could do that with just this asset. Um, that's how that's how well they did on modularizing this out. So, yeah, I think that this is a absolutely fantastic asset i think it's well worth 150 bucks and i think that um if this is the sort of game that you're looking to make uh, uh that this is the aesthetic you're going for that this is a must buy um it is definitely worth it and i i would highly recommend it um <clears throat> so that's that for this one uh if you have this asset and you have any or, and you like it or don't like it let me know in the comments what you do or don't like about it uh, if you have any questions that I can answer as a, you know, completely separate person, just a 
person who uses these assets um let me know in the comments and then uh let me know if you like the videos like like how i'm doing them and you know all that and i will otherwise see everyone in the next one